Even if you're practicing for years to learn jazz, then you may not see a lot of progress. And there is a real chance that a lot of the time that you spend working on learning to play jazz is a complete waste of time. This is probably because you don't take a step back and look critically at how you play and what you're practicing. It doesn't matter if you're just starting out or if you already have experience playing and a repertoire of songs that you gig with. You need to get this right to get as much as possible out of your practicing time and keep progressing. There are a series of questions that you can ask yourself about your practice and your playing that will help you determine if you need to change something. Let's look at the first one. Do you know what you want to improve? This seems simple. You're probably thinking, what do you mean? I just want to play better jazz guitar. But that is nowhere near specific enough. You want to be very precise with what you want to improve, which skill to work on. Think of it like this. If you want to get better at using arpeggios in your solos, then it's easy to find some exercises so that you can play arpeggios, check out some examples, and start writing some licks with those arpeggios. That all seems obvious, but which exercises will make you better at jazz guitar? That doesn't tell you what to practice. So essentially, you want to keep digging into what you want to improve until you can figure out exercises that will help you grow that skill. But before you lose yourself in only doing exercises that are specific to one skill, then there's something else you need to ask yourself. What are you learning from your practice? The previous question was there to make sure that you understand your playing and how to focus on getting better but it is as important to look at what you are practicing and then be able to recognize what you are learning from each of those activities. Let me go over a basic example and then one of the most important exercises that you should be working on. Let's say that you're practicing diatonic triads in a major scale. An exercise like that is helping you develop flexibility in the major scale, your alternate picking, if you played with alternate picking that is, an overview of the diatonic harmony in a major scale and your fretboard knowledge. So there are many things that you will work on within a single exercise. And this is also what justifies why you should be spending a large part of your practice time playing music, which is probably the most important exercise to work on and the thing that you always want to do. Without being specific, then the goal is, I just want to play better jazz guitar. And what is jazz guitar? That is playing songs and improvising over the chord progression. So even if it's not a very specific set of skills, then you want to be better at it. And that means that you also want to practice doing that. There are many essential skills that you develop when you play a song and start improvising over it. You need to do more than just play the right notes. You want to make the notes and arpeggios into phrases, not just hit the chord changes and target notes at random. You want to learn how to build an interesting solo because a solo is like a story and has to have a beginning, a middle and an end. You also need to make sure that phrases fit together and don't sound like random copy pasting of unrelated licks. But if you want to be efficient, then there's more to it than just what to practice. You also need to evaluate if the way that you're practicing is actually getting you anywhere. Are you getting better? Once you've come up with exercises that help you develop the skill that you want to improve, then you also need to keep track and see if you're actually improving that skill. You may think that this will be easy to spot, but that is actually not always the case. A lot of things that you work on can be stuff that takes a week, a month, maybe years to get into your playing. Again, this can be about technique, but it can certainly also be about getting new melodies into your ears and then out into your solos. Recording your practice can be extremely useful for this, and taking notes or having a list to keep track is also making things a lot easier. For example, I've been working on using octave displacement licks and getting that to sit better in my playing. So that's something that I both consciously try to use but also try to evaluate if I'm listening to a recording of one of my solos. Then I will be asking myself stuff like, can I play this? Does it sit right in the line that I'm playing? Is that how I want it to sound? If you don't keep track of these things, then maybe you're not getting anywhere with what you're practicing and sometimes you will get there faster if you use another type of exercise or change the focus of what you're practicing. Otherwise, you're stuck doing exercises that are not helping you get any better. And that's probably not what you're hoping to do. I find that the next two questions are overlooked when it comes to finding the right types of exercises. And I think that's a pity because 
they really do help make it easier to find the things that will actually improve your playing. Is this a practical exercise for your playing? Sometimes you lose something in translating a goal into an exercise and that can make the exercise almost useless. A common example is how practicing scales is not always helping you play better lines. If you look or listen to solo phrases, they are rarely just a lot of scale runs. Well, in jazz, anyway. And there are other things that you want to learn as well, or probably even focus more on, so that you are building a vocabulary of things to play in your solos. You want to learn some diatonic arpeggios, diatonic triads, maybe some examples of people using that scale. Another thing that I see people wasting a lot of time on is not planning the process of learning well enough and forgetting maybe the most important part of the goal. Do you know how to use this? Now, of course, you're choosing exercises based on what you want to learn and have in your playing. And this is great for motivation and usually just makes it more fun to practice. But you do need to watch out that you also know where you're going with it. I hear this mostly from students that are working on things like the altered scale or Barry Harris 60 mini stuff. Learning the scale and the exercises is maybe not easy, but still something you can work on and it will be okay. The problems start when you don't have any way of using it. You don't know any examples of altered licks and you don't really know what to do with the scale. That's why you also want to ask yourself, do I know how to use this? Sometimes that's easy. If you're working on arpeggios or triads, then you can probably think of some licks with triads that you can use as a blueprint for making your own vocabulary. And in that way, get the things into your playing. But without something like that, then that can get pretty tricky. And you may find that you're wasting practice time working on that topic. Being aware of what you're learning and what you want to learn is incredibly important. It's also important to not get fooled by some weird myth that you hear. And there are actually quite common ones floating around when it comes to learning jazz or even music in general. Stuff like this can really slow you down and let you waste a lot of time chasing something that in the end, it's just not true. If you want to avoid these, then check out this video that discusses five of them so that you have a clear idea about where you are and what you should be working on.